everybody, and welcome to another episode of This, That, and the Other. I'm your host, Magic, and we're joined today for episode 12 with Super V97, and he's been a member of What Is Sports since September of 03. He carries a 844 winning percentage, having earned 5,811 victories. 222 of those have been conference championships, and he's also earned 37 national championships. So quite the experience for Super V97. Welcome to the show. Uh, doing good. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you for joining us. And as we start off every show, we'd like to know who you are, where you're from, family situation, how you chose your user ID, etc. So share with us uh, at will. Yeah, so uh, my name's Sean. I probably shared that with a few people via site mail. Um, uh live in uh, Alberta, Canada, born and raised, never ever lived in the States in my life, and uh, just fell in love with college football and GD Dynasty just kind of seemed the uh, ap- appropriate road to go, of, considering I loved uh, NCAA football on PS4 and PlayStation and all that, and they don't really make it anymore, so... Uh, kind of got into GD and, and yeah, here we are. So, uh, how did you choose your user ID? That Super V97 has got to mean something. <laughs> it literally means nothing. <laughs> uh, it is a old Hotmail account that I created oh. when I was in my younger teens and I typed in something that I wanted for my username and it said, you can't have this one because it's taken. Here's a few suggestions. So I just clicked on one of the suggestions. And, and there you are. With it. And here I am. <laughs> Years later, still stuck. Yep. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into the questions that were selected for you. And the first one is, do you ever use head coach scouting during recruiting? And if so, what does that report provide you that an assistant coach scouting report doesn't? Um. I actually, for for the purpose of scouting, I actually never use it. The only time I ever use it is to hit the qualifications for maybe turning a a recruit green that didn't from just sending an assistant coach scouting trip. I'll do the, you know, the two and two or three and three, whatever it takes. What area do you need to improve the most as as far as your gridiron dynasty coaching realm goes? Is it recruiting? Is it game planning? What do you think is the area that you need to improve most? I think there's always areas to improve, uh, but, you know, straight up, I spend very little time game planning. My my game plans are set it and forget it, and I generally, I think Seabrake mentioned it as well, too, in his interview, my game plans are what they are, and they don't change. It's just going to say, you know, I've tried mixing up a little bit of running into my passing offense here and there, but generally speaking, it's, you know, I have different playbooks set up, and that's the only thing. I never change them. Now, the next question is, which of the levels is your favorite? And I see currently that you have quite a few Division II teams. Uh, you've also got Miami, which is a Division One team. So is Division Two one of your favorites? And if so, what's your least favorite? Uh, Division two is my favorite. I think it gives us the best balance of being able to, um, you know, maximize your player usage as far as the depth charts, uh, fitting them into your playbooks and game plans, and then also maximizing the recruiting and development part, which is my favorite part of the game. Uh, I play the mm-hmm. game for recruiting and development, and I think Division two kind of gives it the, the best of all of that. Um, Division one I enjoy for uh just kind of the there's it's a it's a lot more competitive in, in not only recruiting but also in your games. Um and least favorite is, is division three because it's just you know, literally set it and forget it. Uh and I don't enjoy having kind of there's not enough control in it. Exactly. I feel the same way. You're you're pretty limited into how you can Uh, establish your own little personality on the team. So we're going to go ahead and close this segment out. Join us right after this. Beacons brings the moving prices down. Beacons has the lowest cost in town. 
We cost you less cause we move you faster. Every man is a moving master. We're the best train moving men around. Did you ever see a beacon's man at work? That's poetry in moving. Beacon's bring the moving prices down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beacon's bring Now there are no local moving rates lower than beacons. Just sail on into the weather vane. We'll greet you with a smile. We'll cook you up some tasty treats. Be our guest for a while. Sit back, relax, and grab a brew. The price is fair for sure. We'll cook you up some tasty treats. Fresh from the shore. Fresh from the shore. Sail into your local weather vane seafood restaurant located just over the border in Salem or Nashua, New Hampshire, or on 1290 Main Street, Leominster, and try their world famous haddock fish and chips for just $7.75. Sit back, relax, enjoy the food as it has always been. Huge portions of great tasting food. Friendly service with a smile. Cocktails and brews at a fair price. It's so nice here at Weather Fame Seafood. Welcome back, everybody. We're joined today by Super V97. This is segment two, and the first question is, if a team runs a 3-4 or 4-3 defense, how many DBs is a reason about the roster, and why? So I run a 3-4 primarily in, in the majority of my teams, and I roster eight defensive backs. Um, I like to have, you know, if you have four that are obviously your starters, and for stamina reasons, I like to have four that can sub in. Now, what is your choice of positioning for offensive linemen? For instance, do you like to keep a certain core quality offensive lineman for your inside run, or do you look for offensive linemen to support your belief on what's best for an outside run? How do you position your offensive line? So I, I follow a fairly general principle. Um, if you're running, strength is more important for – offensive line ratings. Uh, so generally speaking, if I'm running outside, I will have my top run blocking offensive linemen on the tackle positions. So the guys with the best strength and, and ratings that way. And then vice versa for inside running. If I'm running inside, I'll put my best strength offensive linemen on guards and centers. And then with the caveat that outside run, uh, I like to have a specific blocking tight end that is basically another offensive lineman for the outside running as well, too, because I think he gets factored into the offensive line calculation. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, if I don't have a good run blocking tight end, I'm not running to the outside. Now, what are your thoughts on using a running quarterback? Uh, I've never done it, and uh, not something that I've ever tried all right, here we go with the final question of this segment, and that is, do you prefer a team with one huge class or a team that is more balanced across all classes? Uh, um, my teams are all set up the same, and it is balance, balance, balance. Um, I like to, you know, my recruiting is very specifically, if I'm running a pro set pass team, I recruit one quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver, alternate years for a tight end, alternate years on whether I recruit three or two offensive linemen, same for defensive linemen, you know, it's either one or two, two linebackers, two defensive backs, and a punter when I need a punter. So it is all balance all day. All right. That is going to wrap up segment two. Come back for more right after this. I heard you want to be a Frito Bandido like me. You do? Then you must sing the Bandido song. Let's sing together. You just follow the bouncing Fritos corn chips bag. Ay, 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 ay. I am the Frito Bandido. Hey, I like Fritos corn chips. I love them, I do. I want Fritos corn chips. I'll get them from you. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I am the Frito Bandito. Give me Fritos corn chips and I'll be your friend. The Frito Bandito, you must not offend. Now, boys and girls, you are Frito Bandidos too. 
You sing the Frito Bandito song, and you look for crunchy Fritos corn chips. That's nice. Mo, we got it, we got it. You got what? We found a way to put Simon Ice Car Wax and Simon Ice Car Cleaner all in one push-button can. And just how does it work, Professor Nitwit? Come on, we'll show you. Come on, we'll show you. Come on, with. Now look, the squirt's on. You push the button. See? See? And then what? You spread it around and let it dry. And it's really Simonized, is it? Watch this. Sure, it's Simon Ice. Look at that shine. <whistles> we'll be famous. We'll make a fortune. We'll call it uh, Instant Simon Ice. Instant Simon Ice, you lame brain. You can already buy Instant Simon Ice everywhere. Instant Simon Ice? They thought of it too. Simon Ice thinks of everything. Try Instant Simon Ice, another easy new way to brighten your day from Simon Ice Company. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. This is an interview today with Super V97. Starting segment three, the question is, how do you determine where to set your fuel goal max? Oh, that is a wonderful question. I think I set that many seasons ago and probably haven't looked at it since. <laughs> um, to be to be honest, it's probably set somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or 60 yards just away so I don't run into a scenario where you know, let's say it's set at 45 and there's a 47-yard field goal at the end of the game to potentially win it. You don't kick the field goal. You go for it on fourth and five and fail. Um, so, so I think I have it set at a pretty long distance just so I don't run into something like that. Um, but I do play fairly aggressively on fourth down where if I'm, you know, if it's the fourth quarter and I have you know need to win a football game, my team will generally – you know, if it's fourth and three, they'll probably go for it. Now, what factors into your decision to redshirt a particular player? Uh, the general answer would be, you know, I'll look at potential first and the ability to grow. Um, but it really depends on my team as well. So on all my Division two teams, for example, uh, I generally only redshirt offense. Um, you know, in fact, you know, in, a, in an I form or pro set where I'm just passing the ball all day, I redshirt a quarterback every year, I redshirt a running back every year, and I redshirt a wide receiver every year. Um, I've got a couple teams where I'm experimenting with trips and, and wishbone where I'll redshirt you know, a couple running backs or a couple wide receivers each year. Uh, but generally, it's it's the same. It's quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. I don't redshirt outside of that. What is your most memorable what if sports moment? Oh, that's probably I have to say probably first national title. I'm just trying to think if that's when I was at uh uh Alabama or not, because that's a long time ago. Um <laughs> I, I, I think the the division one national ch- title, um this was back in G D version two, I think. Uh, was probably the the sweetest because the we still had a lot of coaches back in that day. I mean, it was start, people were starting to fall off a little bit more, but the competition was still a lot. You know, you didn't have a lot of sims on the schedule and and things like that. So I think that's probably the the sweetest was my first title at Alabama. Are you ready for those ten numbers? Ten numbers. All right. Let's we go. Uh, let's go with four, seven. Nine, eleven, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-nine, thirty-three, uh, thirty-nine, forty-one. All right, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for spending your portion of your day with us here today. I know uh, it provided a lot of insightful information to especially some of the new folks out there. Do appreciate you stopping by. And as always, you get the last word. Any parting thoughts? Uh, no, just, uh, you know, a huge thanks to to you for doing this. Um, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun and, and a lot of great interviews so far. And I hope a lot of coaches continue to step up and do it. And uh, definitely encourage uh, new coaches to reach out to some of us grizzled vets. Uh, I know for me, I'm always open to to answering questions, whether it's on the forums or via site mail. And there's a lot of us out there that are always 
open to helping new coaches out with the game because we want to see the game. You know, I prefer playing against real people as opposed to same AI, same AI all the time. So feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. And this has been This, That, and the Other. Join us next time. 